pretty dramatic weekend as you mentioned three banks were um pretty much um taken over by Amcon, but the process was very interesting. First of all, the NDIC announced the formation of Bridge Banks, Keystone Bank, Enterprise Bank, and Main Street Bank to take over the assets of Bank PHB, Spring Bank, and Afri Bank. Joining me in the studio to give us the perspective of the central bank, like you mentioned, on this very interesting development is Kingsley Mogalu. He's the Deputy Governor of Financial System Stability. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us on the show Thank today. You for having me. Uh, doctor, I have to start with some comments I've seen from some analysts. Sure. And there was one with a headline, timing could not be worse. Many are of the view that you have set September as a deadline for the recapitalization of these banks. And of course, four banks have already come out with transactional implementation agreements. But over the weekend, in what I call a very dramatic twist, we find three banks pretty much um, taken over by the NDIC and Amcon now filling in the hole. You obviously will get more perspective on Amcon, but why did we have to take this decision now? The timing, in fact, could not have been better. Um, the reason for that is that if we had waited uh, closer to uh, September 30, uh, the banks would have become carcasses. Um, already there was a lot of pressure uh, from some depositors uh, on interbank placements, uh, from people who knew that the more it became apparent that these three banks were not had not sealed a deal, it became clearer that there was no way they could meet uh, the deadline because in order to meet the deadline, you have to have a memorandum of understanding um, or go straight to a transaction implementation agreement. You have to have a scheme of arrangement. You have to have court ordered meetings. These things take time. Mm -hmm. And without an MOU in place at this time, without a TIA in place at this time, uh, it was clear that if we had not acted now, um, the, the systemic uh, problems would have actually been much more if we had waited okay, closer can, to September. Can you just give us some, some more insight? We do know that, for instance, AfriBank was in talks with Vine Capital. That, those talks were not approved by the central bank. Um, there was speculation that Habib Bank of Pakistan was in talks with PHB, and Springbank was also talking to some investors. So, can you just shed some light on? In each case, what exactly were the issues there? Well, the much light I can shed uh, at this point um, without um, you know, divulging what should be confidential information between the parties uh, is simply that there were no deals uh, that had been reached between uh, AfriBank and any other uh, potential investor. Um, they, 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 one of them, as you know, as you said, was not approved by the central bank, and uh, AfriBank indicated that it was not the board of AfriBank was not willing to go with the subsequent with the second um, bidder, um, which left it then with nothing uh, except the possibility of uh, of uh, Amcon investing becoming the main investor in the bank, which they themselves, in fact, foresaw uh, and uh, foreshadowed. Um, the, in the case of PHB, the negotiations, there, there, there was uh, uh, an MOU that was reached, but it was not acceptable to the central bank for various reasons, uh, because the terms were not good enough. Um, in the case of Spring, again, um, the, the, there was no deal uh, on the table. So the question there were a number of investors, but there was no concrete deal that right. was arrived. So the question now is, where do we go from here? Yes. Um, Amcon has recapitalized these banks. That's right. At least we should be getting more insight on how that process evolved uh, when we talk to the CEO later today. Yeah. But the question now is, um, where, where, where do these? How, how, how can, how would things be different if I can use that perspective? Yes. First uh, of all, question? first of all, I think it's very important for me to stress that these three banks today, Main Street Bank, Keystone Bank, Enterprise Bank are among the safest and strongest banks in Nigeria as of today. Mm -hmm. So depositors' funds in them are safe. They are capitalized way beyond the uh, required capital adequacy. Um, and uh, they're very robust with an injection of nearly 700 billion naira mm -hmm. by Amcon. So they're going to be very strong and robust banks. And the challenge now is to just manage them for value. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if I were a depositor in those banks, I would actually be very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, another important uh, factor that I should highlight is that the, this action by the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation which the central bank, of course, supports, uh, prevented a liquidation 
of Afribank, PHP, and Spring. So Bank. those banks were not liquidated? They were not liquidated. Mm -hmm. What happened was a purchase and assumption of their assets and liabilities by the NDIC uh, and transfer of those assets and liabilities to what is called a bridge bank. Mm -hmm. And that's a very neat option because what it does is that it draws a clear line under the past and there is a seamless transition of smooth banking operations into the future. Yeah. And that's what you have now. If you go to those operations, uh, to their sites or to their branches this morning, you will be able to transact any business you want yeah. under new names, of yeah. course. But obviously, Amcon are the new owners of these banks. But they won't be owners forever. And the question is, the lessons we've learned from this process, because unfortunately, three banks were not able to get recapitalized on time. Yes. How, what would be different in this, in this case? And should I say, what will be the assurance that we will get a deal? Because Amcon obviously cannot own these banks forever. No, certainly they cannot. But, you know, it's a market process, and already um, we know that there will be continued interest in these banks from potential investors. Indeed, the fact that they have been now fully capitalized yeah. uh, should make them even more attractive to some investors. Yeah. So um, in the future, we expect that it's not a, in a rush. There is all the time now to you know, build them into, into proper brands and um, offer them to investors who are interested. And those investors should be talking to Amcon going forward. Uh, we expect that that will happen. Let's talk about the likely market impact. Obviously, the Security and Exchange Commission has come out to place a full suspension on the shares of those three banks. Um, the Central Bank has already um, come out to say they would guarantee deposit up to December, yes. even though, like you mentioned, they've already been recapitalized. What type of impact do you see going forward on this transaction on the broader financial system today? The impact we hope to see is that it actually helps to stabilize the financial system. What happened over the weekend draws a line under the financial crisis of 2008, 2009. And as I said when I spoke over the weekend, the matter is now firmly, finally, and fully resolved. Um, therefore, the eight banks that were um, you know, sort of distressed uh, will be fully capitalized by September 30. All the banks in Nigeria will be fully capitalized by September 30. Mm -hmm. And so the systemic implication is actually very positive. Now, in the big, that, that's why we're putting out quite a lot of information over the weekend and today, you know, just to make sure that depositors and other players in the market understand this. Mm -hmm. If you go to uh, the former AfriBank, if you go to the former PHB, if you go to the former Spring Bank, under the new names, all obligations will be met. I can assure you of that categorically. Mm. And what, as, as this happens over the next few days, I think it will become very clear mm. uh, to everybody in the market that uh, these banks are, are going to be just normal players and there's no problem at all. Okay, I have to wrap now, but very quickly, Obviously, key development about the weekend was also the downgrade of U.S. debt. What impact do you think this is going to have of, we're in a situation where this has happened in the context of a uh, global debt crisis? How will this impact Nigeria? Now, we um, pointed to, to this coming in the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee communique, our, our statement after the MPC meeting a couple of weeks ago, um, that this you know, means there are dark clouds in the global economic system and that we should uh, begin now to uh, reassess our ex assumptions in terms of the benchmark price for crude oil because there could be uh, an impact on the crude oil price. And if that is the case, it will have implications for Nigeria since we are mostly dependent on crude oil for our foreign earnings. Mm -hmm. However, there are also other potential implications that we should be looking at. And those implications are not unique to Nigeria. They're, they're, they're unique. They're, they apply all over the world. But we also need to look at the credit markets. You don't want a credit crunch, um, given what's happening also in the Eurozone and you know, banks that have correspondent lines to Nigerian banks. So we are looking at these things, and we are taking macroprudential uh, measures to be able to uh, be prepared. Um, but we hope, of course, not for the worst, but uh, for better. All right, Deputy Governor, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. I'm speaking to Deputy Governor Kingsley Mogalu, um, financial system stability at the Central Bank. He's given us his thoughts. And of course, the dramatic intervention in three banks in Nigeria is back to you, Alicia.